Hello everyone, we're back with more T10 Designs. I'm Yamino. And I'm Ash. I'm not going to do my giant introduction this time. And I'm David. Yeah. <laughs> and we are now drawing Magpie's Tin, as you can see. We. <laughs> like, like I'm having anything to do with it. Elena, the great and powerful Yamino, is doing all the drawing. I'm just cleaning up the popsicles. <laughs> It's a good thing we've only just started drawing, or I've only just started drawing. I've been really upset if I did not record the magpie one. I love magpie. Me too. Magpie is great. Try not to clatter too much, dear. Huh? Don't clatter too much. I'm trying not to. Oh, Maple Lily asked if Magpie has any vitiligo markings that you haven't seen. Yeah, I mean, you haven't, you actually haven't seen most of Magpie's body. So yeah. Magpie has vitiligo all over. <laughs> Laura is asking, uh, girls, how do you feel about the nickname Asshole Extraordinaire for the guy from the tournament, uh, the one who tried to kill Oscar? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm good, thank you, David. That wasn't Winkle, that was our cat Aang. Hi, Aang. <laughs> Hi. Someone asked, how do I pick the tea flavors? Just guts? Pretty much. I I don't really know how to explain how I pick them. Sometimes it just, it just feels right. Some characters I have to think a lot more about it, while others kind of just come together naturally. Uh, when it comes to magpie's tea specifically, magpie uh, comes from England, or the Sister Claire equivalent of England. And um, I wanted to pick a very British tea for Magpie. I also wanted something that would evoke kind of a starry night. And I thought that, and also I'm a little biased because Earl Grey is probably my top favorite black tea. So I thought I could do kind of an Earl Grey remix for Magpie. Something that would also remind you of Magpie's colors like blue and black mm -hmm. and uh, something sweet and dark. Undine asked, is there a reason Magpie's Tea ingredient listing is still half from Oscars? Huh? Did you, are the words still? Yeah, it's just because I haven't, um, I haven't put all of the, I should continue that, shouldn't I? I, I hadn't finished it before I started sketching, that's why. Thank you for pointing that out. I likely would have forgotten. <laughs> Snowy asks, is Magpie a shapeshifter? And if so, could he get rid of his vitiligo if he wanted to? Magpie can indeed shapeshift, although only into one or two things. And uh, could Magpie get rid of the vitiligo? I mean... 
Theoretically, maybe, if Magpie learned a magic specifically for that, but that would take a lot of training and work, not to mention keeping it up all the time, because yeah. transformation is something you have to be consciously aware you're doing. All it's not time. like it could be a permanent change. I mean, I suppose some witches could do that, but that wouldn't be transformation. That would be something else. Yeah. But moreover, Magpie doesn't want to change the vitiligo. I think Magpie is super proud of it. It makes mm -hmm. Magpie thinks it makes him look special. Yeah. Magpie is very vain. I don't, I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know if vain is, is the best word to describe magpie, but magpie is certainly very proud. Um, I I would call magpie vain, and okay. I don't I don't think it's even a bad thing. I don't think that magpie is vain in the same way that say Rosalie is vain. Mm -hmm. I think magpie is vain in the way that. A lot of people who have been told that they're ugly and unworthy and unwanted tell mm -hmm. themselves that they're beautiful so that they can rise above that. Yeah. It's not like Magpie was born with a lot of privilege and holds it over other people's heads. Yeah, that's true. Snowy says, I thought if he was like Mystique from X-Men. I is not like Mystique. Magpie cannot change into pretty much anyone. Magpie only has a couple of forms he can change into, and to know what those are, you should catch up on the missing moments, darling. But in one of the movies, uh, or the second one, I think, uh, Mystique, like, Nightcrawler asks Mystique, like, why don't you stay, you know, in disguise all the time? And she says, because we shouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was a yeah. pretty good line. <clears throat> People have asked too, why doesn't Magpie just, why don't Magpie and the Bird Witches just stay birds most of the time? It takes a lot of work and concentration, and it it's just, it's really not a good idea. They are already worried about drawing shards in general, but if they were using their magic like constantly all the time, they would draw shards even faster. Is she in the closet? Yeah, Winkle, come out of the closet. <laughs> Winkle, nobody in our family will stay in the closet. Blaze asks, don't they also run the risk of losing themselves if they're birds all the time? Maybe. Uh, we haven't really discussed that idea much. I think it would be very hard for a witch to stay in animal form for a long time because it does take concentration. Mm -hmm. um, I think it may be possible for some animal witches to sort of lose themselves over time. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it would be quite hard to stay transformed for that long. I think, though, like, I think there is a point at which, like, if an animal witch was good enough at maintaining their animal form, I do think there is a point at which it would it would be very hard for them to shift back into a human. Like, I don't know if, if they would lose their, their human mind, but... Um, we would, we would have to think about it. That is not really a situation we have intended to incorporate into the story. Animorphs did enough of that. <laughs> Snowy asked, can Magpie get pregnant when he wobbles? Uh... Technically, Magpie can get pregnant all the time, but Magpie would probably be horrified. When when Magpie is feeling the wooble or not feeling that the wooble, it doesn't mean that Magpie is shape-shifting. Yeah. Magpie always has the same human body when in human form. Magpie just feels more feminine some days than others. I don't even know if feminine is really the right word. Yeah. It's more like Magpie is feeling the wooble. <laughs> yeah. Definitely catch up to the missing moments when you can, Snowy. I know you said you read slow, and that's fine. They will be there when you get to them. Um, <clears throat> but Magpie does not alter their body uh, in that particular way. Magpie turns into a bird. So, or a giant bird. A bird or a big-ass bird. Yeah. Let's see. Uh... This is a really good question. Ardon asked, didn't Ozzy sleep through the night in her wolf form? How does that work if it takes continued effort to stay transformed? Ozzy is very, very good at 
her particular kind of magic. She's had lots of practice. Um, maintaining her wolf form probably isn't that hard for her. Maintaining her in between form the werewolf form yeah i don't i don't think she could maintain that while she was sleeping or unconscious mm -hmm. like i think i think she would pop out of it <laughs> joe asked do some animal witches keep distinctively animalistic features such as pointed ears sharper teeth etc yes absolutely lupo is one of them lupo keeps sharp teeth Lupo's not able to fully shift at this point, but Lupo was able to make his teeth slightly sharper, and you can believe that Lupo keeps the teeth sharp. <laughs> <laughs> it's all he's got, so he's going to stick to it. Oh, Lara, you know me so well. <laughs> oh, someone says Matt has an extra finger. Does? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oops. <laughs> you're I right. always do that. Oh, that's kind of creepy now that I look at it. <laughs> Magpie is actually supposed to be missing a toe. <laughs> yeah, well, that would not be on the fingers. I know, I know. I know where toes go. Shoot. Do you? Hmm. Hey, she just looks at my hand like, ugh. Snowy asks, do any of the Sister Claire people have six fingers? Well, most of them have six, just not necessarily on one hand. Uh, there was actually a character who was originally going to have uh, more than five fingers Clement, on each Clementine hand. Clementine was originally going to have, it's called like polydactylia or something. Yeah. Polydactyl. Yeah, polydactyl. But that ended up going into horns. So. Yeah, we changed that to horns, and I think it's a much better... Yeah. Inuji asked, for this drawing, are you sketch slash drafting and final drawing on one layer? Yeah, pretty much. Um, because I don't usually do this, but when it comes to the style for these tea tins, I wanted it to look kind of sketchy. So I'm doing all of the sketching and the, the final lines on the same layer. Hmm. People are ad admiring uh, Magpie's hair. It looks very much like yours right now, Helen. Does it? Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to see what Magpie's hair is based on? You should turn on your camera. My hair is not quite as flippy, but usually right after I take a shower, it looks a lot like Magpie's. Very. <laughs> Sometimes it even does a little, little flip in the front. <laughs> Good night, Karen. Good night.
<laughs> what is it? It's a uh, arm lotion. Ah. That stuff with Sarah. Should I draw Wubble Magpie on this picture? Up to you, baby. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Due to popular request. <clears throat> there was something I was really wanting to incorporate into the to last week's missing moment that I couldn't because there just wasn't room. I wanted to uh, have magpie fidgeting and like I wanted Marguerite to be like, are your bindings too tight? I've told you not to wear them too tight. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll get to it at some other point. But thus far that's only been mentioned in a library. I want to make it officially canon. Oh. Oh. Magpie's precious. I love Magpie so much. You too. We do. I'm admiring. <laughs> I, I don't really know what I'm looking at. <laughs> you sound more nervous than anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> asked, how exciting was it for you guys when Magpie was first revealed and people started to like him? You know, funny story, Tubbs. I wrote Magpie completely on a whim. I just pulled Magpie out of nowhere during a live write when someone asked for some backstory on Marguerite one day. And I really liked the concept and Elena and I talked it over a lot. And we eventually you know, hammered out all the details to have the magpie you see, know, and love today. But I actually, I had a really hard time grasping what your concept for magpie was, but I remember on one particular car ride, I had been trying to draw magpie in a live draw before, and I was getting really frustrated because I didn't really know where, what the concept was for magpie. I didn't really feel like I had a good grasp of the character, and I was really struggling to design magpie. Mm-hmm. And this frustration was further increased because I was drawing it live in front of lots of people and they were watching me struggle. And I don't really like that because I'm kind of proud. <laughs> and I remember getting kind of huffy in the live stream because I was like, this isn't working. It's not coming out right. I want to go to bed. <laughs> and then uh, one car ride later, I forget what the context was, but we started talking about Magpie again. And... I suddenly had this flash of inspiration and I realized as you were talking about magpie helping kids and mm -hmm. teaching them to be bird witches, I was like, oh my God, magpies like Peter Pan. And you had already talked about them dressing like street urchins and stuff. And I was like, magpies like Peter Pan and the kids are like the lost boys, except they're not all boys and it's way better than Peter Pan. <laughs> and so after I had that, that flicker of connection, mm -hmm suddenly everything kind of went into place. And I was like, okay, I think I have a grasp of this character now and this character's personality. I'm glad that helped you because when, like, when you said Peter Pan, my initial reaction was like, oh, no. Because, like, Peter Pan in his original iteration is really kind of horrifying. He's kind of a dick. Yeah. yeah. And Magpie is not, like... No, that's why I said Magpie's like Peter Pan, but way better. Yeah. Magpie's actually kind. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
assumes Marguerite is Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marguerite's Wendy. And technically, the inspiration for Marguerite is Maggie Smith, and she does play Wendy. Yeah, she plays Wendy in at least one movie. <laughs> Laura asked, wait a second, when you wrote the missing moment of Marguerite's letter, did Magpie exist yet? No, but I did have the idea that Marguerite was covering for somebody. I had the idea that the witches were her friends. So, like, that entire concept, uh, Marguerite writing the letter deceptively was always in place, but Magpie had not yet been invented, no. I didn't know that those witches would ever feature again. Yeah. Funny how stories work. Laura said, Ash, what a sneaky yet brilliant use of past canon. Thank you, dear heart. We've, we've had to be really good at that <laughs> because of all the, the um, things that don't quite line up between book one. We've had to be very creative. Ash has done a lot of problem solving in that regard. <laughs> Ash is brilliant. Oh, you know. I'm fluffing my hair over here. I know you can't see it, but I'm getting lotion all up in my hair. <laughs> Bill Gregman asked, is Magpie feeling more feminine in this picture? Magpie is feeling the ruble in the picture. Snowy asked, could you do a week of live draws, like for a birthday of the comic and whatnot, or an all-day stream? Live draws are something that we don't, we try not to schedule quite so strictly. Um, a whole week of live draws would... That take... would kind of throw off that... I don't think we could do that. No. Like, we have to work on the comic pretty constantly to be able to keep it updated as often as we get it to you. Like, most weeks we update five days a week. That's a lot. Or, yeah, wait, no. Four days a week. Yeah. We update a Sometimes lot. Sometimes five. Sometimes five. That's a lot. We have to work on it pretty constantly. Keep in mind that I have a full-time job outside of this. Elena is constantly also having to work on other projects. So, <clears throat> you know, it's she's not able to just work on Sister Claire, and neither am I. So we are doing this as quickly as we can at the moment. Um, that's why the Patreon helps us out so much. And we really do enjoy doing these live draws. We love getting to interact with you and say hi and share ideas and maybe some slight spoilers every now and then. But it's not something we can do all the time. And especially, uh, <clears throat> especially Elena has to feel up to live drawing. Like, Elena just said a few minutes ago that uh, she's really proud. What she means is she's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And if she's not feeling in the t kind of mood to show other people her process, it's not really worth it to try to make her do it. Um, I don't want her to be miserable. I... I really like to have an idea of what I'm doing. And the reason that I got kind of upset with myself when I was trying to design Magpie in the live stream before is because I went into it not feeling confident that I understood the character well enough mm -hmm. to design them. Sometimes the same thing happens to me in a live write. Like, I'll start one because I feel like I should. Like, I'll be like, oh no, I haven't done one in a few days. I really should get on that. And I'll start it and then be like, I'm not actually inspired right now. <laughs> and sometimes the inspiration comes, and sometimes it's like, ha ha, no. <laughs> and I feel like I fumble around for a little while and then give up. I'm Googling fancy teacup. Let's look together at what magpie might use. <clears throat> Ooh, look at all these fancy teacups. Hmm. Oh, look at that one. I love it. Of course I love it. It has roses on it. How about this one? I'm rather fond of this sort of geometric mm -hmm. I like that teacup. a lot. I think I'll go with that. Yeah. That has a shape that will be easier to translate. Blaze said, in the previous missing moment, professional opinion, some seem to think Clementine might be thinking of run away, running away. I thought she was starting to get the idea for Eden, someplace safe for everyone. 
That's a really good thought, Blaze. That's a really excellent thought. Snowy said, idea. We should have something where we could throw around ideas and you guys see what sticks. Is that something we could do? You are more than welcome to put suggestions in our ask boxes. Um, we, if this something does stick, maybe we will at least, this is more for me than Elena. Like, if there's something you want me to live write, wait until you see me prompting for suggestions. Like, sometimes I do live writes and I ask, hey, uh, if anyone has any suggestions, uh, please give them to me. And... I'll but see if, if that works out. If you're talking about suggestions for like changing the story or oh, something no, no, like no. that, we can't do that for several mm -hmm. reasons. One of which we've already planned the mm -hmm. vast majority of the story. But another big reason is for like if we got sued or something, we can't just take ideas from people. No, because I... we're making money off of this, and somebody could once we started making profit, turn around and be like, "Hey, that was actually mine." I'm, I don't think that's what Snowy meant. Okay. I, I think Snowy's just... meaning like things to draw during live ah. draws or write during live reads. Ah, okay, I wasn't yeah. sure. I just wanted to clarify about that. That's the same reason why a lot of people who work in animation and stuff can't look at fan art mm -hmm. or fanfics. Mm -hmm. Because they could be sued if something they end up doing is very similar to fan work. Yeah. Yeah, Lara's saying, yeah, we get some really cool live rights with suggestions. Exactly. Like, and sometimes if, if you want something super specialized, you can always ask me on Patreon to write something for you. Like, if you want to see a couple characters interacting who you haven't seen interact before or who you have and you want to see more... Things like that. Like recently, I got a request for uh, Sylvia and Gabby, mm -hmm. and that was pretty unique. Mm -hmm. um, I had a request last month for Yolanda and Olga. That was really cool. Yeah. And sometimes characters will not particularly interact in canon, and, you know, I suppose... Could do an AU. Yeah, I could do an AU. Uh <clears throat> Sometimes people ask me questions like, what would happen if... Dot, dot, dot. <sighs> Y'all come up with some really interesting suggestions. What do you think of this teacup? Is it fancy enough? I think so. I think it's precious. Is it too big? I worry that the cup is too big. Nah. <laughs> Joe still really wants me to write some Oscar and Claire. Oh, don't worry, I'll get to that. That's two of my favorite characters right there. <clears throat> Joe says, I'm so excited for that one, Ash. <laughs> Me too. Okay, I need to I need to stop. I can feel myself getting really nitpicky over this one, but it's because I like magpie so much. And I don't draw magpie very often. Mm. And when I do, it's usually for a missing moment that I'm drawing at like 1 a.m. and I don't really have time to do lots of fine detail, but I love magpie. Me too. Okay, okay, <clears throat> okay. Tug said, can we get more twin shenanigans? Oh, I'm sure that'll be coming up sooner or later. Mm. Yeah, I really like it when you write the twins, whether they're young or older. I really like writing the twins. Despite that she's such a shit, I really like Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you write her because she's such a shit. She's not always that way. No, but young Rosie... Well, Rosie in general reminds me a lot of me when I was little, which is kind of unfortunate, but, you know, that's why she's endearing to me, I guess. I was a little brat. <laughs> little brat. Little brat. I love 
flag by. I feel like if we did a comic about Magpie, or if mm -hmm. Magpie featured a lot more heavily in the comic, mm -hmm. people would be shitting their pants all over Whoa. this character. I mean, I'm not saying that people don't like Magpie already, but like, if there was, if Magpie was more of a mainstream character, was like, I think Magpie is the kind of character who would be like Tumblr famous. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Well, you know. People just need to wait a little while. Yeah. I hope people will still like Magpie as much when Magpie is older. Well, shame on them if they don't. I know, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay, okay. Hey, why did all of this change to be the same color? I did not request that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it says Earl Grey twice. Oh, does it? Earl Grey. No, Earl Grey Moonlight, Earl Grey Lavender. They're two kinds of tea. It is kind of confusing, though. What if I put blackberry in the middle? I guess so. Yeah. That's the kind of tea it is, though. Yeah. Okay. Meow. Who's your fat fat? Hey. Are you a fat pet? Hey. Don't love my shoes. Hey. No, no, don't, don't chew on those. What's wrong with you? Hmm. I'm kind of worried about this now. What? Magpie has dark skin and dark hair, and with the kind of shading that I've done, it's probably going to look really crappy if I try to shade magpies. Skin too. Aang is inhaling the fumes from my tennis shoes. It's just like... Yeah, this looks terrible. Let me see what I can do. My mole had dark skin too, but... I didn't shade hers. I may just outline the vitiligo and not... Although... Yeah, I don't really like this. What do you think? Like that? Hang on. I'm waiting for the stream to catch up. Oh, that looks fine. It's okay? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm not happy with it. No. The shading is getting a little overwhelming. I think it's a little much. I'm going to 
trying to see what I can do. Hmm. Sorry, I have not much help. I thought it looked good. Joe asked, is Maggie going to be the last draw of the night? Maggie? Madeline. Um, probably so. Probably so, yeah. It's getting to be 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. And you still need to... What? I still need to do the missing one. It's okay. You can do the thing you suggested earlier. I think that's fine. How's this? Yeah, I think that's that really right? great. Mm-hmm. What if I make it darker? And I make this a little... I like this one more. All right. I'm done. Do you want to put Blackberry in the middle? Also, there's a yeah. dot above uh, the eye in Magpie. Oh, oops. How'd that happen? I don't know. Oops. What was the other Earl Grey lavender, right? Mm -hmm. hmm. David, your computer is going into overdrive. Uh, that's not yeah. used to lavender. Huh? Wait, how does... Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Lavender. Uh, okay. I'm going to save this. I hate it when a word looks wrong. <laughs> and that's going to be it for this live stream. Do you guys have any last questions? Please type them quickly while I go upload this artwork to the Magpie T. Oh, I forgot to add Steam. Gotta add Steam. <laughs> Steam is not helping in this case.
Tubbs asks, do you bother saving the Photoshop file? Because those things get so big so fast. Oh yeah, I always save my Photoshop file. Always, just in case of disaster. Sister Claire stuff is too important for me to lose my backups, and sometimes the Photoshop file is all you got. Mm -hmm. Maple Lily asked, which toe is Magpie missing? Uh, a little toe. The littlest toe. Pinky toe. On which foot? I don't know. I don't, I've never had to draw it yet. <laughs> I don't think I've... I, probably the left foot, but... Just because that's easier for me to remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now saving for real. Any last questions? Any last words? If there are no further questions, I'm going to say buona notte. Likewise. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. Shall we sing good night? Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.